Hello, and thanks for having me. It's my quick presentation on live media over quick. I'm Luke. I work at Twitch. I've been working on the distribution team mostly, so we run a gigantic live video CDN. A little bit on Amazon IVS. We're pretty much taking the Twitch video system and reselling it as an AWS service. But yeah, I've done transcoding, done the player, all over the place. I just love live video at this point. But why am I here? Well, there's a lot of things wrong with the world. Live video protocols are one of them, although arguably I should be spending my effort on <laughs> more, you know, more important tasks. But I really care about what's wrong with HLS and Dash. So we use a fork of HLS at Twitch. We've used it for many years now. And one of the biggest problems we have with it is just latency. There's only so much you can do. Uh, adding an LL dash prefix in front of the protocol name doesn't quite address the fundamental issues, which namely header blind blocking. So every frame is delivered in order over a TCB stream. When there's issues, that's, that's uh, just going to cause you to back up and increase latency over time. There is an ABR. There is a way to change your bit rate, but you can only do it at infrequent boundaries. So it's just not, fundamentally, it's not going to get real-time latency. So RTMP, which we use for ingest, is also the exact same problem with latency. It has head, one, head of line blocking. Everything's over a single TCP stream. And even worse, the, the congestion control is defined by the operating system. So something like Reno or Cubic is just going to cause buffers and queues to build up and build up. The other interesting thing with RTMP is that it's a dead standard, flash, rip flash. There are certainly some improvements we'd like to make, and there's avenues for that, but it's just hard when nobody really owns the standard. Even just adding new codec support, <laughs> like AV1 or VP9 or whatever, is difficult. So there's, there's an opportunity here. And now this is a controversial slide, but what's, what's wrong with WebRTC? So I've spent maybe a year and a half working on WebRTC, trying to get it to work for at least Twitch's distribution network. And my conclusion is just the latency is just too aggressive, actually. It's the other side of the spectrum where it's very difficult to get picture quality. Yeah, it's very, it's fantastic at real-time latency, but it makes a lot of sacrifices via the encoding or the delivery or even just decisions it makes to try and avoid latency at all costs. So a lot of this is in the actual library itself, libwebrtc, the reference library. But that's the de facto standard. You have to make sure that whatever you do works with browsers, which run that library. It's just complex, difficult to proxy, and fundamentally not configurable. It's, it's a black box. So we tried to move away from it with varied success. <laughs> so question is, why now? Like, why am I here talking about media over quick? Why am I trying to push a new competing protocol? There's already a bunch of UDP-based protocols. Why not just use SRT? Or why not use RIST? Or why not use, like, flavor of the month pro protocol here? Why make a new one? And uh, that's a good question. Fundamentally, though, now's the time because TCP is dead. So TCP, great run, great pro protocol but it's being replaced by QUIC. You're gonna see a lot more QUIC as a TCP replacement, and sometimes as a UDP replacement even, because it was designed to power HP3 and fix the fundamental issues with TCP. And with that comes a lot more features and complexity, because it's effectively just 30, 40 years of evolution in the protocol research space. And we finally get a chance to to fix the core issues. So a few features. It's encrypted. Can't turn that off for better or for worse. It is, has a faster handshake, so it combines the TLS and the TCP handshake. So it only takes one round trip to establish a quick connection. Even zero if you pre-negotiate keys. There is a roaming support. So the idea is that you can switch between Wi-Fi and cellular without dropping your connection. No more four-tuple connection binding. It's, it's fantastic. 
There's congestion control. So this is built into the protocol itself. And this is in user space, so you can just ship some better congestion control algorithm rather than relying on the operating system. It also has a few, bit more information, so you can do you can do better than TCP acts. And finally, there's load balancing. So this is this is a fun one for anybody on the server side. There's a lot of creative stuff you can do with the connection ID and any cast, and it's going to be so so fun watching the the evolution of quick libraries over time. And but what we care about is the API it provides to the developers. As an application, how do I interface with Quick? So it's pretty simple. There's multiple streams. So these streams are independent, meaning that packet loss in one will not impact the other one. You can starve them. You can cancel them. They're, they're fully independent. They are reliable in order. So this is still taking the, the TCP abstraction, but just meaning that you can shove multiple little TCP connections all over the same connection. They do share congestion control. They do share some things, but they're mostly independent. And that's what we really care about. So question though, how do you actually use Quick? Like if I wanted to take RTMP or HLS and just make them better, fix these fundamental issues I talked about, could we just replace TCP? And the answer is no, because if you're just using one quick stream, you're you're better than TCP. Like it's it's slightly better, but it doesn't. You're not using that concurrency for any positive impact. You're still head of line blocking. So we can't just upgrade to HTTP three and call it a day. We need to do something new. So there's a few different ideas here, a few different drafts. The core principle is we need to deliver media in parallel with multiple either streams or datagrams, uh, but there's a few different ways you could do that. So I've been working on Warp. Facebook independently, or Meta, I guess, has created Rush, very similar to Warp, which is really cool to see. And then Cisco has been working on Quick R. They're mostly focused on the real-time and uh, CDN support aspect. I should note that Warp is being used for distribution right now for Twitch, and Rush is being used for ingest for Meta which is really cool to see the same protocol effectively used for two different use cases. So before we can actually talk about why a protocol is designed in such a way, we need to actually talk about what we're solving here. What are we trying to fix? And what causes latency? <laughs> so there's a few fixed sources. There's, there's encoding latency, there's like speed of light, there's hardware. We can't really improve those too much, and that's we care a lot about those for real-time applications, like just the delay of a webcam or something. But that's the minimum latency, I would say. But for HLS and Dash and a lot of these other TCP-based protocols, we really care about the variable sources of latency. What's the max? And more or less, it comes down to network congestion, is that networks are, have a variable speed, and when they get slow, things start backing up. So here's the metaphor. We have a road. Each little gray circle here is a car, but in our metaphor, it's a frame. So we start on the right when we generate a frame, and we want to get it to the left to deliver it to the viewer. So under normal situation, everything's great. There is uh, plenty of space on the highway. Cars will be delivered. They can drive at max speed. They can drive at the speed limit and arrive at the destination in 50 milliseconds in this example. The issue, though, is what if there's road work or what if there's congestion like another somebody else is trying to use the road because they're trying to watch, you know, <laughs> you know something like a roommate trying to watch something or somebody within your ne neighborhood is trying to like, you know, anyway, you're competing for limited resources is what I'm trying to say. Uh, it creates queuing. So routers and the socket doesn't just drop packets. It'll put it in a queue. And this will mean that any new frame that you generate, it can't just speed through the other side. It has to wait for some amount of time. And this wait time builds up. It builds up and builds up and builds up until, uh, this is called buffer bloat, by the way, until eventually you just have to drop. You just run out of RAM. You run out of memory and resources. And that's when you start seeing packet loss due to congestion. So uh, in this example, I put 500 milliseconds, but I've in practice, especially depending on the ISP, you can see like seconds 
of queuing. And this is fundamentally the problem is like when we have too much media to deliver and it's more than the network can sustain, we have to queue it. So we need to drain or somehow skip this queue. And this isn't possible with TCP. Once you put something on a TCP socket, it's going to get sent. You, you can't like, you can't say, no, I actually don't want to send that. You can close the TCP connection, but then you have to make a new one and it's a mess. So this is why people will use UDP because you get far more control over what packets are sent, but you could also use quick. There's also a way that you can have these independent streams and pick and choose which ones get sent. But how, like which, which frames, which packets do we decide will get dropped or skipped in the queue? And that's the challenge is, is figuring out how can we drop media without causing a hugely negative user experience? So the answer is it depends on the video encoding. So simplest setup is this IPPPPP structure where every frame references a previous frame. So you have an iframe is effectively a PNG. It's just a static reference image. And then each P frame is just a delta on the, on a previous frame, one or more. And this is effectively what WebRTC does for, 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 for some context, because it's low latency and simple. You can have more complicated scenes, like we have B frames, which can reference future frames or previous frames and any number of them. The GOP structure can get become a mess. You can do whatever the hell you want, more or less within some codec limitations. And the more references you have, generally the better picture quality. Although this spaghetti of references becomes harder and harder to manage. And also harder for the encoder to figure out which dependencies actually reduce the file size. But eventually you generate a new iframe, either at a scene change or at a, we have two second intervals at Twitch. Every two seconds we generate a new iframe. And this is kind of a reset point where frames will just reference within what's called a group of pictures. They won't reference other groups of pictures. And this is the premise behind HLS and Dash delivering these segments, as they're called, independently. So we can use this to our advantage. But the goal in general is to make it so our network transport matches the actual media encoding. We don't want to send frames or packets unless the dependencies are also sent. And if we drop a frame or a packet, we want to make sure that we also drop anything that depends on it. There's, we don't want to waste bandwidth by delivering things out of order. So we kind of have to map this, this complicated GOP structure to the network somehow. So here's my stab at it. This is Warp. Warp's gone through so many iterations. It's gone from WebRTC to WebRTC data channels to web transport datagrams to eventually just web transport streams, web transport being quick. So, but this is what it currently stands today. So rather than deal with the mess of the GOP structure, we just deliver every GOP in what's called decode order. So this is the, the order that the encoder spits it out and the order that the decoder accepts it. And we put them over separate streams, separate quick streams. So we can deliver each GOP independently. So the core premise here is that we want to make sure that audio arrives before video and newer arrives before older. So these are, this is subjective. So we have multiple streams and we, we, we decide that the user experience is terrible if audio is not there, but video is there. Like if there's audio gaps or whatnot, especially considering the file size of audio. And, and we also made this decision that if the user has between decide between video from like five seconds ago versus video that was generated right now, it's live, they would prefer live and we can just skip over the old video instead. So this is subjective. There's a bunch of different ways you can prioritize these streams. And I think that is based on the ideal user experience. And Warp is flexible. You can just decide whatever priority you want to each stream. And we also star streams. The idea here is we don't want to just cancel because there's always a chance that we can go back and, and deliver streams in time if congestion eases up. So what this actually looks like, to complete the metaphor a little bit, is that we have this multi-tiered highway where new audio, anytime a new 
audio frame is generated, it gets to skip the queue. It kind of all the way, written over the wire. New video is also pretty important. It, it still will queue behind audio. And then, but as you go further and further down, the, we start queuing old video. Like that's just the lowest priority. It's okay if it takes seconds for that to be delivered or we just cancel it eventually. We just need to make sure that the user experience is better if we deliver these streams out of order. So yeah, the, the features, the end user experience is instead of rebuffering, you will effectively have video will stall and freeze until eventually it snaps forward. But audio continues unaffected because we prioritized it. There's also variable latency. The idea is that rather than, I mentioned, rather than dropping, we get a chance to go back and deliver older media. So if you have a buffer size of like five seconds because you're on a cell phone in Brazil, you still have a chance to download that media before you skip it. Whereas if you're on a fiber connection in the US and you want like no latency, you're willing to skip more to, or you're not gonna skip more because your network is able to sustain it. Is it's also CMAF compatible. So the idea is that we just use the existing segments from HLS Dash. We just write them over quick. We it's backwards compatible. If quick is not supported, we just fall back to HLS. And we don't need to have a you know, different segments. And I think the big one is simple. You could just take some quick library off the shelf, plug it into the broadcaster, plug in the player. There's a little bit of reordering streams, but the core network logic is handled by the quick library itself. So there is an alternative. If we do want to make it more complicated, this is what Rush does. This is what Facebook does, where each frame is actually a stream. So within a frame, everything's reliable and ordered, but all these frames can arrive out of order. Now you still have to make sure that you map the GOP structure. You want to make sure that, you know, for example, the I frame arrives before any P frames that depend on it. You don't want to just drop the iframe, but it kind of gives you an idea of what's possible. You can fragment at wherever you want, either per frame level or even per slice level, or kind of go higher like what Warp does and do a per GOP level. And I think the, the right answer is somewhere between, somewhere flexible, so that real-time use cases can drop frames, whereas higher latency use cases can drop GOPs. Yeah, next steps is there's a media over quick working group. Finally got approved and chartered. Uh, we're working to try and standardize a shared video protocol for ingest contribution, sorry, contribution, distribution, and even real-time latency use cases are on the table. So goal is one pro video protocol. We shouldn't have to use RTMP for ingest and HLS for distribution and WebRTC for real-time. We kind of want to combine them into one stack that's able to support everything because there's really not a whole lot of fundamental differences between these protocols. It's just a, you know, it, it's how you write stuff over the wire is what matters the most. But yeah, there's a mailing list, MediaOverQuick at IETF.org. Subscribe to it. There's meetings. You'll see me there. Say hi. And that's all I got. So yeah, once again, I'm Luke. You can contact me, Elkarelli at twitch.tv. You can also just find me on Slack, on video dev. I'm kickslated, I think. Yeah, hit me up. Talk about trials and tribulations you've had with live video protocols and or any questions, there's a resource. So thank you so much for having me and have a great day.